Okay, skip everything that we just said. Let's pretend that didn't happen. We don't think we actually knew what we were saying. Let's take one, Mark. Hey, Firebase developers, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Ask Firebase. I'm your host, Jen Person, and my co-host for today is Todd Kerpelman. Hi, Jen. Hey, welcome to the show. Thanks, it's been a while. It's been a minute, yeah. I like what you've done with the place. Is oh, that, yeah. I think Thank those you. plants are new since I was here last. Uh, yeah, you know, I've, I've been watering them. You can see that they're they, growing. They look healthy. Thriving. I was thinking they, they, they totally look like they're doing great inside of this studio without any actual natural sunlight. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, you ready to answer some questions? Are they about plants? Ah, uh, not this time. Oh. I'll grab some for next time. All right, we well, can answer some database related ones or something. We Sounds might have good. one of those. I think I have a couple. Let's find out. Here, I have a question from David Weinberg who wants to know, I am starting a new project now and it'll be a couple of months before it's ready for production. Should I stick with Firebase Real-Time Database or go with Cloud Firestore, even though it's still in beta? Uh, good question, thanks for asking it. I would say that if you're kind of scared or staying away from Cloud Firestore because of that beta tag, um, don't let that be the thing that, that turns you off. There are actual real production apps out there in the real world right now um, that are using Cloud Firestore. It should be fine for your app's needs. Um, you know, that being said, you really should kind of evaluate these two databases on their own merits and decide which one's best for you. I generally recommend Cloud Firestore for most general purpose apps. On the other hand, if you have something maybe like a real-time drawing app or something that might have a lot of very small but very quick updates, uh, the real-time database still might work better for you from sort of a technical and pricing standpoint. But I kind of lean toward Cloud's Firestore and like don't let the beta thing scare you off too much. Yeah, great question. It was. And great answer. I might have seen that one in advance. I might have answered that one in advance before. <laughs> it's, it's definitely possible. Actually, it was a great question. He put it as a Twitter survey, which I thought was really oh, a good way to evaluate. What did the Twitterers say? Uh, they said Cloud Firestore also. All right. So I think that's the right choice. Next question comes from Alvin Conda, who wants to know, what is the best way to share a collection of docs with some users? So all the users can write and read to that collection. All right, so basically, I think what you're sort of looking for is essentially creating an access control list. Generally, the most common way you want to do this is store your users kind of either like as an array or a map where you might have like your user IDs in an array or a map where like the keys are the user ID and their value is like the role that they have within your application and put that either in the same document um, where, you know, you're sort of trying to control access or like a sibling document or a child, uh, you know, in a, in a sub collection somewhere. And then basically use security rules to say, hey, you know what? Any user can access this document if their user ID is listed in um, this array or this map in this other document. I know that sounds a little confusing, but we have lots of videos on the topic. Um, I know Mike McDonald just released a Firebase Pro Series video all about security rules, where I think he used this very same example, so you can check that out. Um, you can also check out my own Get to Know Cloud Firestore videos, um, numbers five and six, if that's out. Um, both sort of talk about this topic, so, so check those out as well. Also, I might add, if you just have a couple of different roles and let's say you have some sort of moderator and a regular user, that could be a good use case for using uh, custom claims, which you can set uh, using Firebase authentication. So we have a code lab that shows how to do that. And what custom claims allow you to do is put a little bit of details in the user about what their permissions are. So this won't be inside the database, but you can access those claims from uh, Cloud Firestore rules or cloud storage rules or real-time database rules. So you can check for the existence of that claim on a user. Yes, those are good for like, if you want to have data, like database-wide um, level permissions, like this admin can access anything in my database. I think custom claims work really well there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're looking at some use case where you might have like a whole bunch of different rooms with various combinations, what you're describing is probably a better use case for that. All right, but good suggestion. Next question is from Every time. What do you think? Cerovao? Cerovao. Cerovao. Yeah, we're going to go with Cerovao. I like that. Sounds, that sounds coolest. How can I clear local persistence, meaning their cache? I have an app that enables multiple users. When I log in with the other, the first one's data is still there. Okay, so uh, this is a very common uh, feature request that, that we have, and the team knows that this is something the community has been asking for. So they're certainly looking into just being able to have you as a developer say, hey, clear out all my local cache. Um, if, if that is not available, the best solution right now is basically you can set persistence to false um, within your uh, database settings. 
And then actually what will happen is essentially as soon as one user logs out, um, if you detach your listeners and then reattach them again when they log back in, say as a different user, um, that will essentially clear out all your cache data. Um, so for now, that's probably the best way is just kind of set persistence to false if you have an app that you think is gonna be used a lot on a shared computer or device. Cool, good to know. See, I didn't know that. That's why I'm so glad you're here. All right. Ooh, our next question. Wait, this one looks like it's for you? Or is oh, it... yeah, but I'm passing it off to you. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this next question comes from Henry who asks us a lot of great questions. When it comes to, let's say, having a display name and an avatar for a user. Does it make sense to just have that UID for that user in each location in the database? Or does it make sense to, you know, replicate the display name and avatar in every single location? So, I mean, if you're having a chat conversation, should you be repeating that every time or just have them look it up in the database each time? Okay, so this is essentially kind of going into the question of denormalized data in NoSQL databases. The answer is it depends. Generally speaking, I would say, take a look at how often you're gonna to wanna to read this data and how often do you think it's gonna change? So for instance, if we've got a chat app and you've got say your user and they have like their name and profile picture and you know a few other things, and you're copying that data into say every document for every chat that they're in, um, you're gonna have a lot of denormalized data, meaning like that copy is gonna exist in a lot of different places. Now in general, from a NoSQL world, that's okay. The idea is that your app is probably gonna be reading in these documents a whole lot more often than this user is going to be changing their name. And so the whole NoSQL philosophy is, let's take this very common case of reading in your data and make that super easy versus sort of the one time a year when your user decides, hey, I'm gonna change my name from Charles to Chuck or whatever. Um, and that part ends up being a little more of a, of a pain to do. So. In general, I would say go ahead and copy the data you think you're going to be reading in every time, everywhere, and then kind of you know deal with probably using a cloud function, as you pointed out, um, changing the denormalized data in a few batch calls um, when that user ever does decide to, to change their name. Yeah, I love thinking about NoSQL is always uh, a challenge, especially if you're coming from a SQL background. So one way that I've always tried to imagine it is uh, you know taking a look at any view in my app, what is it that I'm going to want to see on a regular basis from that screen and how can I get it um, in as few queries to the database as possible? Yes, that's, that's a good way of looking at it. Right, so if you're getting some sort of thing where you're like doing a query and then nesting another one and then nesting another one, it might be a good opportunity to look at um, how you're structuring your data and, and changing that structure. Yes. Hey Jen, I got a question for you. This one comes from our YouTube channel who's wondering, Hey, can my browser receive Firebase Cloud Messaging data as a data-only notification the way I can on mobile devices? That really depends on the limitations of web push. So I really love this question. At any given time, the way that uh, notifications work on web clients is uh, FCM, Firebase Cloud Messaging, wraps that up and then passes it off to the web push protocol. So whatever is available is really dependent on what uh, that enables you to do. So whatever key value pairs are currently available on web push, those are the ones that you will be uh, able to use. That being said, if you are frequently sending messages that just have data in them, um, it, that might be a better opportunity to send something or like store it in a database. There might be some opportunities for listeners. Uh, it really depends on your use case. But so the short answer is sort of, um, it, re it really depends on whatever is currently available in web push. So I would check out um, we'll link below to those standards so you can send those. I'm glad you're here to answer that question because I, I haven't I haven't done any web development since like jQuery was like a hot new thing. Ooh. So yeah, I know it's been a while. So all this push stuff, it's all foreign to me. So, <laughs> those are some really great questions. Those are some great questions and one bad question. You know who you were. <laughs> thank all of you for asking questions and thank you Todd for coming on and helping me answer these. Sure thing, I hope they were right. And, uh, you know, in order to keep making the show, we need to keep getting your questions. So be sure that when you're coming across something that you know might be a common problem that a lot of people want to know the answer to, be sure to hit it on social media with the hashtag Ask Firebase, and who knows, maybe you'll see it on a future episode. And then you'll be famous. Wow. Huh? And if you liked what you see here, be sure to subscribe to the Firebase channel for more awesome content, and we'll see you on a future episode. Bye, Internet. Bye. Are you guys talking about us? They're talking about us. No, we're talking about Oh, oh, what? <laughs> Pay attention. Yeah, sorry.